hi, I'm Viona and welcome to The V Show, aka The Venture Show. So I have with me Ashley and Min from Trip of Me. And like, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, for sure. It's our pleasure. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm the CEO of Trip on Me. And my name is uh, Min and I'm the co-founder of Trip on Me. And it is also very happy to be here today. <laughs> Uh, thanks for like coming today like really excited and like what we're gonna talk about and like actually help share this passion to like other young entrepreneurs who wants to start their own venture so let's just get started with some of the questions so how did you guys meet um we were actually roommates so we were both kind of like from um vietnam and then like when we moved here to canada and to London specifically, we were kind of like in the same place, living with the same guardian. So that's kind of how we met. Yeah. Uh, like uh, we were only roommates when like uh, we both moved to Canada. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. So you were in the same school? Uh, not exactly. She's she's like, she's still like two years older than me. So technically I'm still a high school student. She's still a university student. But it's just that like we kind of like I... Like, we kind of had the same guardian, sort of. Uh, conversation to start this company. I think we just kind of, like, a chill kids. So, this in the summer, I basically, like, my internship got cancelled. And I just talked to him and, and, like, what should we do in the summers? And she's, like, do anything, something that's crazy, bro. And I was, like, yeah, let trial. Let trial is one of the challenges hosted by Wildcat. I think it's quite fun. So, we just started from there. And I think... The location base is um is one of the benefit that we have. So we we live next door, um. So basically that that that's how the we start out the conversations and even start a business from our basement. I would say. Oh, that's so cool! So you so your internship actually got cancelled, and then you just went into this venture. Why you trip on me, and like why this business? Like where did it came from? That's good. Um, so it was mainly just us sitting at a table during summer and was like, what could we do to make the summer more fun? Because it was COVID and then we were all kind of stuck inside. So we were like slowly going crazy a little bit. And then we were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we were like, if if we're also feeling like the effects of COVID and like the effects of isolation, then like how would other people feel technically? Because they'll be similarly bored. And also we thought that like, other people might also and especially like other millennials or gen z might also want to like find some sort of entertainment or something just to pass the time during summer so that's how we kind of like came with the idea of like doing something that's related to for example traveling and providing these packages just so that it makes it easier for people to like travel quick and easy during summer yeah you mentioned that you started in the pandemic Honestly, like, was it like harder or was it like easier for you? Because the pandemic, you do have like some free time and so on in a sense because of like the lack of like social gathering. Do you think that um, the COVID actually helped with your venture or is it like, like you see it as an opportunity or like a threat? I think even like in pandemic or in normal life, like each of the circumstance will have its own like benefit and like drawback as would say so for example our business models is based on people inside about what they feel about getting stuck at home and this is get this kind of feeling get more often when during the pandemic so it's mean like they need and they urge to to use a sub, sub, um, specific type of products is more often than they used to have so I think this part is one of the benefit of like launching a business in this type and timing. Um, the on the other hand, I think is will a lot. It definitely is more challenging to start it out uh, regarding to like the actual operation of the company. So we do have staff, we do have warehouse, and those things we need a certain like um, convenience to. To manage, we cannot like hundred percent manage uh, online, but we we believe um, being an entrepreneur, and I'm sure that like a lot of our audience will 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 be like really creative and um, think out of the box to figure out some way to to handle like 
the drawbacks. So I would say in our case, we do find a different way to um, to solve that problem. So we think um, it's more about the benefit to start in the pandemic. You guys are actually like really young. Like Min, you mentioned you're in high school and then Ashley, you're in university, right? Like currently? Yeah. So like... Yes. Honestly, are you like scared? Aren't you like, are you scared about this venture or like any, like, or anything that is like whether you're balancing school and work and so on? Like, are you scared of like failure or something? So to me, like starting out a venture in university, so specifically in my second year, I would say I have more, um, like I do have fear for like, a failure sometimes that come across my mind. So it's, I would say like um, at that age, my, a lot of expectation that I receive. Okay. So this is my, uh, my family expectation. This is my professor or suddenly my friend or something like that. So the fear of my, myself, or even like my generation, the Gen Z, I think it's more about like, we have so much, um, times and like convenient to compare ourselves to the others at the same age so sometimes I take a path that's really different from my peer I want to question myself like is this a right path because this path not many people like gonna do it so I don't have enough like example of whether it's a good path or like it's not a good path so I think join uh actually start out the company I think it's it's more about the process that I love. It's it it more thing I like it more happy in that way in terms of like my learning curves because I think like in twenties I probably cannot be like a hundred percent like successful all the time, I would say. So starting out from like step by step, like doing it and correcting if there is a failure is something is a lesson that uh, is more important to me. Then On the flip side, that also comes with like feeling like uh, there's a lot of like inexperience and feeling like I don't have the necessary qualifications. And because generally like a high school subjects, like you don't feel like you've majored in one thing enough. And generally like it's it's all kind of like spread out. So you're like, I'm not sure that I could like kind of specialize into like one specific role or one specific position so it does come with like that kind of like insecurities sometimes which on which honestly like thanks to like the support of like teammates and also other people in trip on me like they help um, alleviate that fear like a lot so yeah that I would say that was my concern (laughs) I love it like I feel like what Min said actually having support there is actually quite important like people around you and like you can go to like if you need any help and so on I think it's very important when you're starting something that you you can't predict you know you can't predict whether you're going to be successful or whether you're going to have hiccups along the way and so on so like having this like a group of people or community that actually helps you with this right is actually really really important do you guys have any like stories to share about like any hiccups that you had during your 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 when you're starting your ventures? You're definitely right that men um saying that like in university or even high school, we don't have like specific expertise or even qualification at, at certain point. So I think um one of the biggest hit, uh, hiccups that we face um are in actually in recruiting. So uh, we remember when like a couple first time when we recruit um, the few important member to our team, for example, like the marketing manager or even like operation staff and stuff like that. I think we really only focus on the task basis. So for example, like this is what kind of task we expect them to do. And that is what we focus on like recruiting. So based on their skills more than like anything else, more than like even attitude or like um, I would say like not, even like experience I would say so that will create um, a mix of culture so different person joining in the team will bring bring their own like personality and um, which is kind of like picket 
based on our like feeling and and some source of like analysis and stuff like that. So that it will actually like dilute the the culture that Min and I want to build up. Like, oh, this company is really open. We are flat hierarchy, and we want everyone to share. That is the biggest like um, key characteristic that we we really believe in. So I think um, the way that we solve the first pick, uh, hiccup is that like we need to actually sh- um, sit down with our like senior staff at that time and have a conversation. And we did that for three times uh, until we decided, okay, this person can do a job amazing, but he might not fit to our culture and he might not... Um, present the may not be a good like candidate to present a company when meet with client that's what we really keen on um so that's why we just like okay uh grab it up we happy to have you um but then we probably need to move on with like something more exciting and more fitting to our uh, culture so later on when we recruit the next um manager we do have more experience that time and we we consult a lot more uh, from Headhunter or even like from the community what we that we have access to to recruit. Are they like similar age or are they like older, younger? So generally like yeah, it has to a lot to do with um like leadership and just generally like as Ashley said, like working with people who are like way more experienced than me. Yeah, um, so like it comes, I guess, with like generally, yeah, so like a lot of the issues that I kind of had also was just like generally with kind of figuring out like the ins and outs of like the normal business world, like for example, like um, doing meetings or maybe potentially like having like appointments and so like setting schedules and stuff like that. I guess like generally for like a more organized person, this might be like the, the norm, but like for me, like it's, it's, it's like a completely new territory. So yeah, so there was like a lot that I had to learn with generally like navigating and also like doing and like, I guess trying to be a functional like person. Yeah, I guess faking it until, until I make it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like in men case, she also in, in, in a position that like they all older than her. Um, but then she still need to lead the team. So mm-hmm. I would let her like share that experience um, to me, like most of the time. So half of the company at, are at the same age with me. Like we really driven and we like, we love entrepreneurship. That's why we get, get her into a team. And most of like the manager, they are all like older than me and have a like four or five year experience working um, after you graduate. Mm-hmm. I don't think the age is the difference um, at first because I, I thought like we just be friend and it's, it's more fun to work um, and seeing the other person as friends more than a colleague and, and only work related stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why we get like pretty close and we share a lot about like life and like uh, something that's beyond work. So I think um, age is not the problem. Um, the problem here is sometimes that like coming from a debate between like me and the manager sometimes because like they have more experience and sometimes their vision is a lot like soldiers into a, a son experience that they used to have. So it takes me a lot of time to have a conversation about like do, they do have to trust me and I build that trust like day by day and they they have to see this company is a lot different from um, like the company that they used to work with and the nature of Asian um, like corporate is also different from the way that I structure the company that get influenced by Canadian styles or American style. So yeah. Is there like a barrier between you and your like co-workers or colleagues? You mentioned that corporates, you know, like you know, being in a corporate company before, there's always this hierarchy. So you, you guys are like a very like young, young, young group. So like, is there like a barrier or is there like, you you just give them like a sort of like not full, full freedom, but just like freedom to do what they think is right. 
So whenever they have problem, they're gonna come to me and let me know. And building that like strong relationship of being friend instead of like mm-hmm. um, me at the CEO and like you have to listen to me. So that's how I can manage the the company. Even like sometimes both Min and I live in like different city, even like different country from myself. Most of the time, the, the decisions will make um, during the debate. So I do sit down with um, each of the manager and we have a chat and we do have like a couple, at least like three options that we have in mind. And then we will do a little brainstorm with the team. And that's how we get more feedbacks and we're going back and we make a decision. Um, I think the best part is that most of the manager, they trust Min and I when in terms of like choose between like two, the, the two options because they know I will put myself in the company's shoes to think, okay, this company, where it's go? And they believe in my visions when they come in. So that's why they think like, okay, even if at this stage, they don't know whether this decision will lead to the outcome that we want or not. But at least they know the decision based on the moment that both me and the manager trust us to make the decision that's good for the company. And I think being a young like CEO or like even CTO like Min, we do need to have to work a lot like harder so then we set an example for all the manager and the, then we need to keep up with that um, work the um, uh, ethic for a really long time that how we can gain trust from them and that's how they can see yeah we are young but then we're serious about this and we do and we believe in what we want to do so I think that somehow move people in and and make them trust us more how do you build this relationship you know maybe like was it like awkward at the start and how did you actually made it in this uh, organizational culture where everybody is like just open and like knows what they need to do and like will help create like build this venture together so Min and I we kind of like playing a little play when we recruit so back into like the time that we're still in recruiting so basically we come in and we pretend like we are much older than we we are um so that people kind of like oh my God, like Ashley, she looks so serious. And Min, she look kind of like half professional and half like open and friendly. That's kind of create for people might of like, oh yeah, like at least they do have two different managers that they can approach. So that's why they kind of like open up a lot more with Min at first and like have a lot of fun with her. Like chatting with Min is really fun. She have like crazy stories and like, um, yeah, um, I would say that me and Min, we truly want to understand them. So we hold like different kind of like icebreaker um, activity. And we even share a lot about ourselves. So for example, like I gonna share sometime, I just come, come across my mind and be really personal about like, yeah, I do have dog and cat. And like, uh, yeah, my boyfriend and I like visit this and that. And Min kind of like, Yo, I just figured out a good ice cream shop like ever. And this is my favorite like ice cream flavor and stuff. So that would make me feel like it's not really about a workplace. It's like this is a place that they can come and have fun every day. We chat and like we kind of like sharing like different stuff. Let's play a game. I'm pretty sure like all of us use TikTok and are like very updated with the latest slangs. But today we are not doing that. <laughs> today I'll be telling you some boomer slangs and then we will see like whether you can guess what does this mean. Let's just have like a little competition. Like who, which, <laughs> which co-founder can guess these boomer slangs the most? What does groovy mean? Um, I would guess it's mainly in the context of like music, sort of something that's like, like sort of like upbeat and really catchy. If that counts. Uh, is that a dance or like okay, a I'll movie give you about it? I don't know. I'll give you a hint. Oh, that shirt is so groovy. That church is so groovy. 
So it's cool. That's it. that's what it means. Yes, it's actually it means that something is very trendy, very fashionable, very uh, amazing. Raz my berries. Okay, so this is in a sentence. The new theme park sure do raz my berries. Annoy? Oh, like annoy or annoy? Would it? Would it? Would it be that? I'm confused. Yeah, like what is she? Yeah, that's what I get. Like I, they, they vibe with me. <laughs> uh, before this Zoom call started, were you feeling something? Excited? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. Oh, books. that's a good, yeah. good. The next one is flip your wig. John's mother flipped her wig when she saw <laughs> what she did. Ignore. Um, discuss. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's, it says to me like a vocabulary test to me right now. <laughs> Min, help me out. No such online. I seen you typing, bro. <laughs> no searching. No searching. No, 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 no. <laughs> angry, I guess. It's oh, angry. Oh, I see. She became. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the definition is to become crazy or very angry at something. This is my favorite. Skinny. What's the skinny? It's a it's a very Gen Z term also. Like we just changed the word. Yo, like you was a Gen Z word. I like word. <laughs> well, if I say the Gen Z word, it's very obvious already. So you must think uh, of a Gen Z slang and just change the word skinny to another word. I actually know because... every single one of it before I even did my research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give up. I give up. <laughs> okay, do you know? Okay, the Gen Z term, right, is called what's the tea? Oh, what's the tea? Yeah, so it's to get story. Yeah, so what's happening? What's the tea? What's the skinny? <laughs> Wait, are, are they a big fan of jean or something? Like, what's the skinny? Where's that? Where's the origin of, of that word from? I you know, no I know, I I know when uh when I was young, I watched these like, I watched a lot of those like uh, uh detective movies, and they always use <laughs> this slang, like what's the skinny? Then they had the hat and the like trench coat and everything. Thank you for watching the V show, and we hope we have filled you up with the passion to just do what you love. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And watch our following videos.